All right, so we are back and today we're going to be comparing GPT 5.1 to Gemini 3. Now last time we didn't have much luck with Gemini 3 and despite its massively overhyped release, it seems like the main feature they added was actually just clank explaining, which is where in the response of Gemini it will patronize you despite having not given the correct answer to what you've asked it and imply that you need some sort of visual aid to understand its genius level response. Here's a, a little image for your dumb dumb monkey brain to understand because I'm a stupid clanker. We're going to be testing these models with some research problems that I'm doing for my maths PhD and of course I'm not going to be biased either way. I do think that Gemini 3 was massively disappointing and the best feature that they added seems to have actually been plank explaining which isn't even a good thing and now people are saying a lot about GPT 5.1. O3 was really good but since then the improvements have been decent but by no means have they seemed to be groundbreaking especially with regards to the specific kinds of maths problems that I work on on a day-to-day -day basis. So can Gemini 3 pull itself out from the ashes? Can it plank explain itself back to victory? And will we finally see the LLM do something really impressive in real time on one of these benchmarks? We'll see. Let's get straight to the problem. Okay, so we've asked GPT 5.1 on thinking mode, uh, Gemini on deep research and thinking mode, so two separate prompts. And we've also asked Grok uh, 4.1 uh, thinking mode, which I guess is a beta version. So just as a summary of the question, so I'm not going to go into huge detail, but I said, here's a method I'd like you to study. It involves a Chelsea decomposition, evaluating some moments of logarithmic derivatives of characteristic polynomials and random matrix theory. I give it some ideas of what should happen. Important thing, you'd be left with many integrals in the complex plane. I explain the whole method, blah, 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 blah. This, I'd like you to comprehensively read this and see if you can generalize the work uh, in order to understand moments of the form like this, like explaining what it is, exactly what it is. I basically say, okay, you might not be able to do this because it's too difficult. You might want to consider this, which might be a bit easier. Uh, so that's the prompt that we've actually given every single one of the models. It's the same one in every single one. A good thing uh, for Grok is I really like how they convert your prompt uh, into LaTeX code. That's something that Gemini and um, ChatGPT don't do. That's actually really nice. I hope that they implement that in ChatGPT and um, Gemini. I will say though, Grok's response was really disappointing. This is the main equation that it gets. And, and we'll see that actually every single one of these models seems to get this equation. Main reason being is because it's actually an application of a very well-established formula known as Fadi Bruno's formula. Uh, so this is kind of standard, it's nothing special. And other than that, it doesn't really do anything. The more interesting comparison I would say is Gemini and ChatGPT. Now I will say uh, from Gemini's side, I did have it do deep think or, or, or deep research or something like that. And the answer was pretty crap. I have to say it was pretty, it, surprisingly, I guess, actually. So it starts stating this formula here, which is complete mumbo jumbo. That's just not true. It's quoting a, a paper, but completely misunderstanding what the paper does. They, they don't study moments of this form in that paper. The important comparison is GPT 5.1 on thinking mode, extended thinking mode, and Gemini three pro on thinking mode. So I'm gonna give you an idea of what things I liked about each response. So I would say, so, so every model managed to get this equation. You see, even Grok, even Grok managed to get this equation. We go down, boom, same equation. Grok, same equation, uh, same equation, same equation, and they all give it the same thing. So anyway, then we go through. What I liked about Gemini's response was this. I'd say this was the most interesting part for me, uh, was this uh, limit of the gamma matrix, which you would need. To be honest, the rest of it is really not that useful. On the other hand, uh, ChatGPT, when we run through, bam, same equation that we mentioned. This equation I would say is nice, uh, but they package it here. So this equation is probably on this first response one of my favorite that it did. It's not it's not a huge thing like it's not um you know it's not groundbreaking at all. It's a little starting point that I could work from. Uh saves me a bit of time from doing the whole algebra. Then it does this uh useless expression because this is obviously true and then it explains what happens when it's integer kind of fair enough. Uh, and one thing that I like, the other thing that I liked about ChatGPT's answer is this final bit in equation H. You see it has S squared plus 2KS. That shows to me that I can trust it to some extent, whereas we didn't have that on any of the other models. So why this S squared plus 2KS is so important, the reason being is that this is a very important factor because it tells you how fast the quantity goes to infinity when Z goes to one. And the exponent here, which is called a critical exponent, I know from other research that for this specific example should be S squared plus 2KS. ChatGPT got two things good, and I would say Gemini got one thing good. So I then asked a follow-on question. ChatGPT took like loads of attempts for some reason to, to get it. Like I just wasted my time asking it the same question. 
But anyway, it then did it. So using your research, obtain a closed formula for this moment, and using your research, obtain a closed formula for this one. So I went through. From this point, they start to diverge. I think Gemini kind of redeems itself because it does clarify that it's sort of understood what you're doing. What's interesting about Gemini's response is that although it didn't get the correct answer, it did follow through with the prompt. I had asked it to evaluate two complex planar integrals, and that's exactly what it did. However, after verifying this on Mathematica, its formula was incorrect. ChatGPT, on the other hand, only did one of the integrals and left the final formula in terms of one integral remaining. So not quite what I'd asked actually, but still technically correct. And because of this, I thought I would give Gemini's answer to ChatGPT to see if ChatGPT could go any further. Okay, so I've actually had a review of all of the notes and I had the clankers team up on this one. So instead of having them battle out, I actually gave Gemini's response to ChatGPT to see if ChatGPT could then work on that response to give a better answer. So what did we do? Well, I gave ChatGPT the same equation that Gemini had, and I said, this is what Gemini gives for the final planar integral. I know that it's wrong, but it has some truth to it because it agrees that z is zero. Could you obtain a closed formula by doing that last integral yourself? And after thinking for some minutes, it did manage to give this expression here, which is a very weird double sum. and. To my surprise, although this formula is very ugly and effectively useless, what's quite crazy is if you go to Mathematica, you can test to see whether it agrees with kind of a simple example that you know to be true. Uh, and if I scroll down, you see that this polynomial here that starts with the 48, so it's just some function of z, this is the known result here, and it's right in the numerator of that expression. So I don't know about you, but that's pretty crazy that it's able to do this level of advanced um, mathematics. Like this is quite a few equations, and um, it's not like, an unbelievable am amount of equations, but you know, it's doing some substitutions, trying to like move around this complex integral to find an answer, uh, and it's able to get the right answer. I think that is quite mad. So maybe from now on, we should have the clankers team up to solve problems uh, and not try and say which one's better than the other one, because at this point, they look quite similar, to be honest. I want to say a huge thank you to you guys. Uh, the last few videos have had an incredible amount of support, like I've just never seen that much before. And especially like the hype points thing seems to have made these videos do really, really well. So just a massive thank you to you guys. It really does mean a lot. I hope that this makes it clear that Gemini and ChatGPT are quite similar and Grok uh, is a bit of a joke. I will keep testing Grok in these videos for a laugh, uh, but for now you can see that both models are decent and they are really useful still, despite not being able to do research on their own. Uh, it's still pretty much an invaluable tool in order to kind of communicate with it and to learn actually an area or field that you've never done before because they really do sometimes have these really strong glimpses of like doing something really interesting and it teaches me so much in the process that it's just a no-brainer really to keep doing this but with that said i hope you enjoyed the video and more importantly that you have a good one